Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. Really do appreciate you subscribing and really appreciate you leaving comments. It's come to the stage now that I, I do read every single comment, but I can't reply to every single comment. It's just going to take me too long. I've got so many things to do, but I appreciate them, advice, etc. Your own personal setups. I do have a little look at what you write and your personal setups. So go and check it out. Something that may fall in this channel that I may be able to get hold of later and have a listen to and give my opinion on. But obviously that's price depending. I always get the cheapest item. I'm always following tons of items on eBay. Whatever comes up the cheapest, that's the one I buy kind of thing. There's no need for me to overbid on anything. I always underbid and hopefully get a little bit of a bargain. So I'll say a big thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Keeping me going and hopefully building up the channel as well. I'm talking about underbidding. This is a, such an item that I underbidded on. This is the Pioneer SA5300 amplifier. So I bought this locally. Uh, add it up on eBay, the seller for £35 here in the UK. I put in a bid for 25 thinking he'd probably meet me halfway at 30 and I thought for 30 it's not a bad pickup. I can stick it on the channel, have a little tinker around with it, etc. And sell it back on. I'm not going to be much out of pocket kind of thing. He, I put in 25 and he accepted that 25 So I shot around and picked it up just a couple of miles away. He did say it was battered about a bit, you know, you can see by the pictures of the eBay and it was. And he said that these controls make you know, a kind of scratchy noise when you turn them, etc. But that's just usually uh, cleaning the pots. Doesn't always work that. I, I may make a video or something, but you know, when you get these scratchy pots, it's not always like a detox or something like that and they're going to be fine. You're going to get some pots where you're never ever going to get them clean. It, it's just got, it's been sitting in that position so long to wipe up. It kind of makes an indentation in the carbon, etc. So when you keep going back, it, it always seems to make a kind of noise, a little click, a little bit of scratchy noise in that position as you go past it, comes through the speakers. It, it's rare-ish, but it does happen. So you're not always gonna guarantee to clean these pots. And for some of these old ones, you may have to replace them. So just bear that in mind. They're not always cleanable. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very small percentage out of all the stuff I've got. I think there's only one item at the moment. I've had quite a few that, that it isn't repairable. I did have an amplifier as well uh, where the, the volume wasn't uh, in stereo. One channel was a lot louder than the other. Even in the off position, sound was coming through and it, it, that, wouldn't, that needed a new pot, which I didn't bother doing. I just sold it on as is. So just bear that in mind. You're not always guaranteed to kind of clean these up with just a spray. There is going to be an odd occasion where you do need a new pot. Okay, so I've got it back home. I'm going to show you the top of it here. Here's the top. As you can see, not fantastic. Not bad, but not fantastic, you know what I mean? And here's the side. Now, the side panel here, as you can see, is quite rough. Uh, I haven't showed you the other side panel. There's no need to. It's a lot better condition than that. Have a little look inside. Quite dusty. Hasn't been dusted or been sitting somewhere for ages by the looks of it. A few more pictures there. I removed the bottom plate and there's the, you know, it's nice easy access to this amplifier. That's one good thing, just the top to come off and the bottom plate. And you've got full access to everything really in this amplifier. So going back to these pots, uh, when you take the top off, these top ones, most of these are nice and easy to get to so you can clean them with your detox nice and easy. And with that bottom plate off as well, just show you the top ones there, they're nice and easy to get to. Now if we take the bottom plate off, which I did, as you can see, then bottom pots are nice and easy to get to as well. So straight away, you've got access to all the pots, all the switches, the uh, function selector, everything in there. Uh, you've got the loudness and the tape monitor as well. All accessible, all cleanable, uh, which is going to be good news. Obviously, get a, a brush in there or something, give it a dust, give it a clean, etc. So you can, you can clean it up to a certain extent. As for the sides, I'm not too sure exactly what I'm going to, you know, going to do with them. Don't really know a lot about painting and metal work kind of thing and getting paint off of metal and all that. I do a bit of obviously bits and pieces around the house, but uh, when it comes to this, I'm no expert in this at all, so it's going to be a bit of trial and error, maybe. Uh, maybe some paint stripper or something like that, and one of these black can sprays you do your car with or something like that. That may do this. If anyone's got any other suggestions that's uh, easy enough to do, then maybe stick it in the comments down below. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about that. Worst case scenario. I can always sell it back on straight away and probably get most of my money back, if not all my money back. But also with this amplifier, um, it needs a little bit more done to it maybe than just that. So I'll come to that as I'll tell you how it sounded. Here we go then, this is the sound part of the uh, video. Right, um, like I say, I think this amplifier could do with uh, having its capacitors replaced. There's quite a few of them in this amplifier. I think it's 20 or 25, somewhere around there. I think they could all be replaced here. Nice and easy to do, it's going to take a bit of time. Top comes off, bottom comes off, you've got full access 
to the circuit board. So something you may want to bear in mind if buying something this old, that uh, it could be that the capacitors do need replaced. And not say oh, this is this is one of the items that stands out in my collection that probably does need doing, where others don't stand out nowhere near as much. So and hopefully this will bring the tone up to maybe where it should be. But don't forget this is still bottom of the range uh, of Pioneer back then in 1976, which was you know their budget budget kind of amplifier. And I'm going to compare this to another budget amplifier around about the same time, which is a Sansui 101, the kind of one I compare with. And the reason I do that is because they're roughly the same price back then. It would be an unfair to compare this to a more expensive amplifier back then. You would expect that, or a newer amplifier coming forward, you would expect that to sound a lot better than this. If it didn't, maybe there would be something wrong. So that's why I compare the two. And it, you know, it's quite a nice sounding amplifier, that sounds. So it's still quite well regarded for what it is. Don't forget for what it is. Obviously, a lot better amplifiers about, but you're paying a little bit more money for them, etc. And like I say, this is a, a case where this is probably needs uh, recapping. Now, there's a channel called, uh, let's just get that channel, Sounds of When Vintage i Fi. I'm going to put a link down below. I hope he doesn't mind. If he, if he does mind, I'll take the link off. Uh, and he's it, recapped this particular model. Uh, so, you know, maybe you can tell me you can leave a comment or say how he sounded before and sounded after the recap i should imagine there was quite a bit of difference uh because this amplifier here it took a while to warm up you know i normally leave my amplifiers on for about 20 minutes and i get, leave a cd or something well i'll tinker around do something else come back sit down get me focal position then i do wander down the other end of the room you know to kind of give an idea for, but i do like it in that sweet spot in between the speakers sweet spot where the speakers kind of disappear and you can kind of get involved and do a bit more critical listening not that I'm, I'm saying i'm an expert but you know i'm just doing a little bit more critical listening comparing one to the other all that kind of stuff um when i first sat down where the you know the we we'll go through the vocals for instance where the vocals should be you know probably centered nice and focused these vocals on here were like fat you know what i mean the, the singer was between the two speakers literally taking up the whole space uh the instruments was all muddled and you know amongst the kind of thing and all that and um, it I thought, you know, even though it had quite a reasonable kind of sound, still sounding quite nice though, a bit bass lacking, um, it didn't sound quite right. So I, I carried on tinkering around, come back, sat down a couple of times. Anyway, about an hour later, I sat down and all of a sudden everything sharpened up and was where it should be kind of thing. So I thought, oh, here we go. I can do my review from there on. So it's just something to bear in mind that if you buy something this old, you could be in the same boat as me. If you want to suddenly stick something on quick, it's not going to sound as nice as it is an hour later. Uh, you know, listening to it. So just bear that in mind that, you know, if you're buying something really old from the 70s, it could need recapping. And if you can do it yourself, that's going to be great. Like I say, top comes off, bottom comes off. It's, you know, it's going to be a reasonably easy job for a novice. Uh, just do a few at a time. If you're going to do these recaps, get all the values, go to the Wi-Fi engine, something like that, download the manual, find out all the capacities you need, the electrolytics, uh, make a note of them, order them and all that. I mean, I won't pay over the top for these components because this, like I say, it was the bottom of the range amplifier at the time. If you start investing too much into like top of the range capacitors and all that, it's a bit not that expensive, but you know, 26 of them or something, it's going to add up. You may be paying over the top, you may be putting too much into it than it's worth, if you know what I mean. But you know, get something kind of in the medium bracket or something like that, it, it should make a big difference, hopefully, to the sound. I will come along to do that at some stage. What I'm going to do is just do a little clip of music as is, then recap it and do another clip of music and see what kind of difference there is in the sound. Hopefully, there is. Uh, we'll soon find out when I get around to doing that. Uh, right, okay, on to the sound. Now, the top end was quite detailed. It sounded quite nice. Uh, had that nice decay, I like, you know, I like when a tss on the old cymbal rather than kind of thing. I do like that. It gives it a bit more airiness. Gives it, you know, just, it just sounds better to me. Uh, it's a little bit loose. The top end was a little bit loose. Um, it wasn't as, as, as detailed. It, you know, it wasn't quite as crisp as the 101 but you know it was quite you know, it weren't too bad it weren't too bad at all um now the vocals sounded they sounded fine the vocals male and female sounded vocals they, they sounded you know reasonably smooth not quite as smooth as the 101 again not as quite as you know as focused as the 101 but they still sounded quite nice you know what i mean the, the vocals sounded quite nice uh then in the basses this is where this amplifier uh kind of you know lacks uh, you know, it's his downfall, uh, so to speak, is the bass on this amplifier. It's so thin, it's so it's lacking the bass. You know, you've got the bass guitar, you've got the bum, the, 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 the bum, the drum, when he's hitting the drum, the bass drum. You're not getting, you're not feeling the weight, you're not feeling the boom, you know, it's just, you're just about hearing the, 
just about hitting the drum off and a boosh, you know, and I mean, it's no weight line, it was just a little tap kind of thing. And this was going around the kit as well, going around the kit. It, you could hear him, it, it was no weight behind it, it was just like, it was, it was thin, you know what I mean? It's thin, you wanted more oomph to it, he's playing a small set of drums, you know what I mean? The, the drums are tiny compared to what they should be kind of thing. There was no weight to it, so you, you were just lacking that, that's what was lacking the bass guitar. You know, some of them notes, you know, the lower bass, and that was, it was near enough non-existent kind of thing. You can remedy this, can remedy this with this amplifier. You can do two things to help that out, and you can turn this bass up to about number three on here, but just, to, you know, make it even sound better. It's just a little switch here called loudness, and that's what you've got to rip with this amplifier. You've got to flick that loudness switch, as is. Uh, like I say, after a recap, it may be a bit different, but you'd be pushing that switch down. You know, it sounds quite nice with that switch down. It, you know, it brings that bass up to maybe where it should be, or nearer where it should be, uh, and does help a lot. And you know, it sounded, and I sat back and listened to it with that loudness on. I thought it sounds quite nice, you know what I mean? Quite nice, I could quite easily sit here and listen to this. It's quite involving, it's quite musical as it happens. Got my old feet tapping and that. So in that respect, it was quite nice, but I don't review amplifiers with the loudness switch on, or these controls put in any other position than zero or flat. So uh, going by that, um, the bass was lacking. It's a big downfall. It sounded, it sounded uh, not tinny, it sounded um, thin, quite thin this amplifier, quite thin sound. So it needed more body, needed that more bottom end. Um, the sound stage, like I say, was, you know, it was quite focused once, uh, once it warmed up. The instrument placement wasn't too bad. It's still a little bit bunched up and that, not a great deal of depth to it, but it wasn't too bad. It, you know, it was quite, you know, quite acceptable, that kind of thing. Didn't have a lot of airiness to it or anything like that, but it's quite a nice sounding amplifier. Like I say, it's quite nice sounding on the thin side without this switch down. That brings it back up, you know, makes it sound better. But you know, it's quite a thin sounding, and hopefully, you're going to pick up that uh, with the demo I'm going to put up with the uh, Morden Short versus the Wolfdale speakers. Now, I know it's a big comparison between them two speakers, quite a contrast, just two speakers that were sitting there, and I thought, oh, maybe a little bit of fun. Do a little speaker, okay, it's a great big speaker, like, you know, I mean, not saying they're massive to Morgan Shorts. They look a little bit bigger in the video because of the camera angle, but uh, I just thought it'd be a bit of fun. Someone may find that interesting. I don't know, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I spent an afternoon doing it. Enjoyed what I did, you know, a little bit of a muck about, and uh, as I did the video, you know, even if it come out bad, still could stick it up there. Somewhere along the line, it may help out someone or give someone an idea of what a big speaker would sound against a little speaker, give them more of an idea, maybe. I don't know, anyway, I've stuck it up there. A little bit of fun really but um yeah coming back to this this is where this amplifier gets stepped down is in the bottom end now the instruments here if we get i'll go through a few instruments here listen to a bit of jazz and that the trumpet it all sounded quite nice could do a little bit more focus than that but where this bass was lacking kind of like it was just losing a bit of body these instruments like you know what i mean it needed that bass just to be turned up to help these instruments out a little bit more make them sound a little bit more nicer a little bit more realistic kind of thing so this is where this amplifier at this particular stage of me buying it and getting it is being let down is with the bottom end overall making the amplifier like i said sounding quite thin uh, so that's it really so um hopefully when i come around to doing these uh, capacitor replacements at some stage i don't know when that'll be because i've got quite a few other things to do and talk about and muck about with etc but so uh, we'll get around to it at some stage hopefully but just bear that in mind maybe if you're buying this amplifier you know audition it um or ask the person selling it, you know, how is that bottom end, or maybe get a pair of speakers that are quite bassy that may help it out, but uh, you're just lacking some stuff, you know, you're lacking some instrument there, you're lacking that uh, bass guitar, you're lacking that bass drum, you know, it's just lacking there, you know what I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a thin, thin sound, I think you've got that by now anyway. Sorry, I cut that video there, I carried on waffling, I couldn't help myself, I just kept on talking and talking and talking, I've got to remember to stop. Okay, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.